Hello dear students, so so far now we have discussed in design of beams about laterally supported beams and laterally unsupported beams. So these are the two types of beams in which the compression flanges are laterally supported either by flooring or left unsupported. So in these ty two types of beam sections we go for the design procedures from the IS codes. And as we have seen that in this uh, notes, we have discussed completely about the plastic moment and uh, this uh, development of plastic moment throughout the entire fibers as we go on increasing the load on our beam section. And this is how complete fiber uh, gets yielded in this case. And here it is development of MP plastic moment capacity and this is the case when it is equal to MY. So this is also discussed in this notes and this is from the book uh, by SS Bhavikati and uh, we have shared this also on Moodle and you can have a look at all the explanations being given here and it in plastic analysis the neutral axis divides the area of cross section into two equal halves and uh, Specifically, in case of rolled section, everything is given in the steel tables as well as the end of the IS codes also gives some data. But in case of uh, built up sections or box sections or compound sections, we have to calculate these uh, values of jet P or jet E. Okay, so in that case, it becomes very very important to do this procedure. So here. As we can see that uh, this is how the plastic hinges start forming okay at the place where bending moment is maximum so when bending moment reaches MP value then plastic hinge formation occurs and when there are sufficient number of plastic hinges is formed so that the collapse mechanism can occur in the beam then uh, is the time that member will collapse okay so different members different structure have different uh, requirements of plastic hinges oh, so that depends on the situation so here it is uh, given that to calculate the plastic moment capacity mp okay so these are the three problems and you can have a look at this notes also and this is very easy to understand just first of all we have divided the total area into two equal halves and then we have calculated the bending moment uh, for the plastic analysis MP and uh, plastic uh, section modulus ZP is equal to MP upon FY okay so you can calculate plastic section modulus also like this and uh, in this example number 7.2 it is being asked to calculate the plastic moment capacity and plastic section modulus for the unsymmetric section in this case diagram looks like this and in the bottom flange it's 200 mm width and at the top it is 100 mm okay so surely this is a unsymmetric uh, section and here first of all uh, the total area is calculated okay and then half of the area is taken as compression and tensile area and then uh, the H value is calculated and this H value is the plastic neutral axis depth from top fiber okay and then we have calculated the plastic moment capacity MP by multiplying the uh, compression forces with the lever arms and the tensile forces with their lever arm so this is not very difficult and these all things are supposed to be discussed in plastic analysis of structural analysis courses like that now then we went for the discussion of classification of different cross section of steels and we have seen there are four sections plastic compact semi compact and slender and basically we ignore in the case of slender classes sections and uh, is 800 do not account for those uh, designs and uh, then now we come to the design procedures and specifically we are dealing with now laterally supported beams okay so first of all we can choose if there is no section provided as such then we have to choose a trial section and uh, it should have sufficient plastic section 
and this is calculated by this value Zp and Zp is equal to Mp upon Mp upon Fy into gamma mo. So, this is how we calculate the uh, value of Zp approximately and then we go for the steel table and from there we choose a section and then we uh, decide which class does this section belongs to and then we check for bending strength MD and also check for shear strength VD and then finally check for the deflection. See deflection check has to be applied okay, in case of beams. Now when DYTW is less than 67 epsilon that means uh, the shear buckling is not occurring in the webs. Okay. So in that case IS 800 2007 consider two cases as we have discussed the low shear case and high shear case. So when V is less than 0.6 times VD it is a low shear case and MD value can be calculated directly using this formula and uh, for simply supported beam and for cantilever beams it is 1.2 and 1.5 and beta V value is given for different sections also. And if there is high shear that means V is greater than 0.6 times VD then MD is equal to MDV and MDV is design bending strength under high shear and uh, the formula for MDV is this and first of all we have to calculate beta and then the value of MD as per the low shear and then MFD. So MFD is calculated uh, from the uh, tabular approach or the uh, empirical approach. So MFD uh, involves the calculation uh, with the help of alpha LT, gamma LT, uh, G, xi LT and lambda LT. So all those factors are included in this calculation of MFD. So we will see it in numerical also and if the section is semi compact section then MDV is directly equal to this value. So the shear strength is calculated with this formula ok. Here area for the shear area AV is given by these formula as you can see the shear area may be calculated as given below. So all these can be calculated and then we have to check at the limit for the deflections. And mainly our building structures comes into this category of other buildings and if it is given for the industrial buildings then we have to go for these checks and this is the boundary line here. And you can see if there are vertically live load coming ok and for the floor and roof the elements not susceptible to cracking then the limitation on the deflection is L by 300. So L is the span length. Okay, so this is mostly in the case of our design problem. Deflection limit is L by 300 most of the time this is the case. Okay. And if it is a cantilever beam then L by 150. This is for simply supported beam and this is for cantilever beam. Okay. So this is the deflection limit check and this also we have to do at the end of the problem. Okay. Now in this numerical it is given that a roof of a hall measuring 8 meter into 12 meter consists of 100 mm thick RCC slab supported on a steel I beams spaced 3 meter apart as shown in this figure 7.8 and the finished load may be taken as 1.5 kN per meter square and live load as 1.5 kN per meter square. Now we have to design the steel beam. See if the steel beam section is given then we can directly write the properties and go for the calculation. But if the steel beam is not given then we have to first of all calculate the approximate ZP value so that we can look from the steel table which type of section we have to choose. Okay. So let us calculate first of all all the different loads that is coming. So here it is the beam section shown here. Okay and uh, this is 8 meter length ok. 8 meter is the clear span length and effective span length will be uh, something more as we have to add this 0 0.3 meter also ok. Then each beam has a clear span of 8 meter. Clear span means that span which is visible to us excluding the supports connection and takes care of 3 meter width of slab and width of slab this much is 3 meter. 
and uh, hence the load per meter length of the beam is as follow so this is the self weight of rcc slab and this is 0.1 due to 100 mm thickness and this is per meter length into 3 meter width so this is the volume of concrete of rcc slab and then this is multiplied by density of concrete which is 25 kN per meter cube and this comes out to be 7.5 kN per meter as we have calculated the value per unit length now for the finishing load similarly it has to be multiplied with 1.5 into 3 and it comes out to be 4.5 kN per meter so if we assume the self weight of the i beam equal to 0.8 kN per meter then total dead load comes out to be 12.8 kN per meter and similarly this was the live dead load then we comes to the uh, live load and live load will also be equal to 4.5 kN and let us now make the loads factored load so factored dead load will be equal to 1.5 times 12.8 similarly factored live load will be equal to 1.5 times 4.5 okay so now we add both of these uh, factored load to get this value so total factored load comes out to be 25.95 kN per meter now the effective span length is equal to effective span length is equal to clear span length plus the half of the uh, B, uh, support uh, width at both of the side into two so that's why we have added here effective span is equal to clear span 8 plus 0.3 by 2 plus 0.3 by 2 since we have to take half of the width of the supports also on both side so that's why it comes out to be 8.3 meter so this is effective span length and we know in case of uniformly distributed load the design moment that is the factor design moment because we have already calculated factor load so that factor design moment for udl is equal to wl square by 8 okay and this is done here and it comes out to be this much value similarly design shear force in case of udl will be equal to wl by 2 where w is the factored uh, uniformly distributed load so it comes out to be this value okay now we have calculated section modulus required zp zp is equal to m upon fy into gamma mo now m is this value so m is kept here and gamma mo is 1.1 so zp required is this and if we open the steel table okay then we can choose ismb 400 which has zp value greater than this much value okay so that's why we have chosen ismb 400 now from the same steel table we have to list down all the properties of the section as we do first of all depth of section then the width of flange and total sectional area and thickness of flange thickness of beb now depth of beb depth of beb d is equal to uh, depth of section h minus 2 times the thickness of flange minus 2 times radius at the corner okay so the same thing is being done here and it comes out to be 333 mm then moment of inertia about zz axis is also given there elastic section see all these properties are given in is uh, steel table that's why we use steel table okay okay that's why we go for the steel tables and it is very important i don't know how many of you have this but you must have while uh, seeing these calculations and then comes the elastic section modulus and this is also calculated and given in the steel table since this is a rolled section okay this is not a built up section now outstanding leg of compression flange b is equal to here b is equal to bf by 2 so bf with of flange was 140 mm so it comes out to be 70 mm now we can uh, go for the section classification and we know that epsilon value comes out to be 1 for fe 415 and b upon tf if b c it comes out to be 4.38 which is less than 9.4 epsilon and d upon tw for the this is this one is for the flange and this one is for the beb and d upon tw is equal to 
37.57 which is less than 84 epsilon so both of these conditions are satisfied that means we can check that our b upon tf is this satisfying less than 9.4 epsilon and d upon tw is less than 84 epsilon okay so by this we can say um, because you can see this is for the check for the web and this is for the flanges outstanding element of internal element of compression flange so these checks b upon tf all the checks are for the flanges and all the checks d upon tw are for the bibs so we have checked both for the flange and for the bib from this uh, table number 2 of the is code and we can say that the section comes out to be plastic section as it is less than these limiting value so and we can check also that the weight of section here is 0 0.6 kilo newton per meter and we have assumed 0 0.8 so there is not much difference and we can go with the calculation as such now let us calculate for the shear strength check and design shear due to external load was calculated by wl by 2 equal to 107.7 kilo newton let us calculate the capacity shear strength capacity of the section vd and this is equal to f by upon root 3 into shear area upon 1.1 and shear area is equal to h upon tw and when we do this it comes out to be this much value and uh, uh, this is surely greater than the design shear due to external load now let us check whether it is a low shear case or high shear case so for that we have to check 0 0.6 times vd comes out to be greater than the design shear okay and so we can say that it is a case of low shear so in low shear if we go for the check for the moment capacity and we know that d upon tw is less than 67 epsilon so md formula is applied this and this is very simple formula and here beta b will be equal to 1 since this is a plastic section and when we use all those values which we have obtained and check it so md value comes out to be 267.3 kN meter now at the end we have to check for the deflection and uh, total working load comes out to be 17.3 and for the working load now we calculate the deflection delta delta is equal to 5 by 384 this value you should remember because this is the deflection value for the working load in uniformly distributed load on a simply supported beam so this uh, deflection formula i hope you must have studied many a times so this must be remembered by you and this is in case of udl i hope you also remember in the case of point load also that is equal to wl4 wlq by 48ei okay delta is equal to wlq upon 48ei in case of uh, point load okay so these two formula you must remember all the times so deflection is calculated here comes out to be 26.127 millimeter and this is less than le by 300 and le is 8300 millimeter and uh, when it is divided by 300 so it comes out to be less than the permissible limit so that's why we go for the provision of ismb 400 which is uh, satisfying in all the different checks okay now we will do a problem also on the case of high shear so let us see in this case we have to design a simply supported beam of effective span length is given here okay it's not clear span length and then factored concentrated load of 360 kilo newton at mid span so it's a simply supported beam but it is not uniformly distributed load here it is factored concentrated load 360 kilo newton given at mid span so we can calculate the moment is equal to wl by 4 as i have already explained you and jp value required will be equal to m into gamma m of divided by f by so this comes out to be this and then we look for the section and then we choose this trial section ismb 300 which has jp this is 
greater than ZP required. Okay, and then we list down all the properties for this section. And here depth of web D is equal to H minus two times thickness of flange plus radius at the corner. So these all these things I Z Z Z E Z P all things are given for the rod section in a steel table. Self weight of beam is calculated. and then factored weight is calculated and some additional factored moment due to self weight is also calculated on total factored moment comes out to be 135.183 kN meter and similarly factored shear force will also be calculated by this formula 1.5 into uh, wl by 2 like this and it comes out to be this so this value is also added to the Uh, factored shear force factored shear force in this case will be equal to w upon 2 because this is a uh, point load case so first of all let us see which section uh, which class our section belongs to now we have applied the ratio check for the flanges b upon tf is less than 9.4 epsilon again and for the bib also it comes out to be less than 84 epsilon so it's again plastic section and now let us calculate the shear capacity of section vd and vd comes out to be 295 kN and from here we have calculated the uh, design shear force equal to 180 kN so let us check whether it is in low shear or high shear so 0.6 vd is 177 kN but our this value uh, this value of design shear strength when we checked it it comes out to be greater than 0.6 vd so it's high shear case and now we have to apply different formula for the design bending moment capacity and md will be equal to mdv in this case okay and this mdv calculation is difficult not as not easier as in the case of low shear and it uh, involves some formulas from the Uh, laterally unsupported beams also and it is equal to md minus beta into md minus mfd and it should be less than this value and here md can be calculated by this simple formula and this value comes out to be this now we have to calculate beta value beta will be equal to 2v by vd minus 1 whole square and it comes out to be 0.05 so now we have to calculate mfd and mfd can be calculated only when we know the fcd value because mfd is equal to fcd into area okay and fcd can be calculated when we know fcrb so that's why it uh, it takes into account different steps okay and that we will also discuss in the next video also but here basically i want to uh, tell you that fcd and fcrb can be calculated so first of all we calculate fcrb with the help of uh, slenderness ratio and uh, uh, height by thickness of the flanges ratio and we calculate this fcrb and of course it involves interpolation while calculating fcrb and then we calculate fcd with the interpolation again it has a different table given in the is code and then we multiply with this area of the section to get mfd and when we put this mfd in this formula of mdv then we get the value of mdv and uh, this should be greater than the design moment due to the external loads and finally we also go for the check of deflection and delta is equal to w l q by 40 ati in this case okay and it should be less than l upon 300 okay since this is a simply supported beam so that's why our we can say that the section that we have chosen ismb is adequate and we can use it as beam so this is how we design uh, the laterally supported beams in low shear and high shear so we will also see the design of laterally unsupported beams numerical also in the coming videos so till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you